If we were going to try to entertain a full discussion of what I loosely refer to as pirate philosophy, we would be uh, very remiss, neglectful in fact, to not put a serious inquiry into the value of fraternity. Fraternity is a value that uh, was a major influence in philosophical, political thought, the 16, 17, even 1800s, we have um, largely lost a cultural connection to the idea of fraternity. Most of us have a very little idea of what fraternity actually means. That is uh, really unfortunate. Uh, fraternity is a value was something that I encountered as a kid in rural America. There was still some of that brought up through oh, the Grange Hall experience or this perhaps the Odd Fellows Lodge or things of that nature that you saw barely as a kid, or at least I did. That's really all gone, and uh, without a few kind of archaic examples, again, it's a, it's a value that we have largely lost within our culture which is telling because it was a foundational value certainly within much political thought certainly within the United States or the French Constitution well let's let's look into it and contemplate why it is that we no longer consider it important and why the case may be that uh, it's been eradicated as a value from the society that we live in so if I were to attempt to define fraternity as best as I am able from not only gleaning it from literature of the era, but also political philosophy, I would state it like this. To elevate fraternity as a value is to embrace primary alliances with peers who embrace the universal values of self-expression, liberty, and self-determination. Fraternity is not mere tribalism. Uh, fraternity is an ethical choice to have primary alliances, primary commitment, uh, primary fidelity to individuals who share your desire to express these basic humane values in a universal sense. And it should be noted as well that fraternity is usually a value that is hostile to hierarchical authority. It certainly owes no allegiance to hierarchical authority. Those who practice fraternity often understand that hierarchical authority is there precisely um, not to facilitate the expression of these most valuable humane uh, characteristics, but actually is there as a repressive agent. And certainly uh, within fraternal orders there is often a suspicious, if not outright hostile, um, attitude and posture towards individuals who are too um, embroiled with hierarchical authority. There's a certain kind of attitude or perception of um, treason that uh, one is, is uh, recognizing with individuals that have primary alliance to hierarchical authority and those kinds of uh, structures rather than the humane universal expression of uh, personal sovereignty in one's peers. Now of course historically uh, fraternity was and remains one of the most dangerous ethical postures to uh, hierarchical authority that one can possibly imagine. And because it is one that carries a great deal of moral authority, 
it's certainly that uh, hierarchical authority needs to keep it in check by whatever means necessary. And it's like, here's why. Well, let's say that I've got um, some very prickly Asperger's y type um, TV repairman, men's right activist sort in a room with uh, a purple haired. Um, rabid feminist okay and they want to have a discussion with each other being ostensibly at the either end of the political spectrum at all levels if both of those people were to embrace not only their ideology but fraternity they would be peers because if you are able to express your own personal ideology but express it in a universal sense you're not using it as a tool of aggression, but rather a shield and as a tool to not only enrich yourself within a hierarchical authority structure, but protect other people. That is, if you are able to express your ideology in a universal sense that applies to all other people, rather than simply gives power to your personal tribe. Well, I'll tell you what, unification among individuals is something that hierarchical authority finds most terrifying. And certainly anything that can be done to keep individuals fractured rather than unified proves itself to be necessary. Now, this is not the 16th, 17th, or 1800s, of course. We live in a modern technocratic control state, and the average individual is so dispossessed of any personal autonomy, so dispossessed from something that looks like individual sovereignty, or even having the capacity or the skill to act as an independent agent, that an idea like fraternity is near incomprehensible. Because... Fraternity takes a high-functioning, independent individual who is capable of making a choice, sometimes perhaps out of necessity, against the whims of hierarchical authority. The average person that lives in a modern technocratic control state can't do that because they are dependent wholly on the technocratic control state for their very existence. They don't dare try to bite the, the feeding hand, and their primary alliances cannot be to their peers, in spite of what their values might must be, because without the blessings of hierarchical authority, without being a slave to that system, they're lost. So if anything, what we see is the idea of fraternity not being this bottom-up value of sovereign individuals elevating the most important values of humanity for themselves and their peers in a universal sense. No, what we see is where it still exists, fraternity being basically an agreement among privileged individuals who are well rewarded within the system of the technocratic control state whereby they largely collude to protect each other's privilege and you might see that within academia you certainly find that within the higher echelons of corporate culture certainly within the financial system there's a kind of fraternity there but it is not one of autonomy it's one of being complicit with a destructive system it is certainly not there to elevate um, the values of humanity, but rather to exploit, unless we can kind of see how it works. I would suggest that we should become aware and recognize that fraternity is a power ca powerful countering influence, and it has a strong moral posture and it demonstrates the necessity of being an independent, sovereign individual. We are a long ways from that, of course, 
but um, reflection on the principle and what it meant historically can go a long way of uh, towards giving us some guidance there. So I think we can see quite immediately that any individual who would say, using the language of the era, choose to make anyone your ally and draw your primary alliances with any of those allies who expressed the values of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and not just in the manner that might have been seen as expansive enough in the era, but in the most universal sense that we know, extending the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, not just to our own culture, not just to our own race, not just to our own gender, not just to our own species, To extend that as universally as we are able, that's a very, very potent idea and one that offers great guidance for um, a resistive posture towards the uh, oppressive tendencies of, of a control state. One needs to be aware, of course, that many of one's peers are so embroiled by and enslaved by the control state that they cannot participate in that. It does take independence and autonomy to be able to uh, meaningfully practice fraternity. But of course it takes independence and autonomy to be a good person, to be an ethical person, and we should not be surprised. That's a noble value. It's not a value that a, a slave can really manifest. In fact, from the enslaved class, what we should really expect is not fraternity, but betrayal. Individuals who cannot be trusted to look after their alliances to their peers, but rather who would be willing to cast um, their peers away, even close peers away, in hopes of gaming, gaining a even fleeting advantage within the hierarchical structures of this society that they live in. Maybe a little monetary gain, maybe a little more grist here or there. And it's not that these individuals won't dress up their um, place for power or prestige or monetary return, um, that they won't dress these up in the language of autonomy and empowerment, they will of course, but it doesn't take too much reflection to see that they are doing that in special cases and not in a universal sense, and their end is not to elevate the other, but to elevate themselves. I think there's a lot that can be drawn from that currently. Anyway, something to think about. It's a deep concept, fraternity. It's something that we should consider and explore and uh, perhaps consider um, making an effort to incorporate it into our own set of values, into our own life, because um, there's some very, very um, beautiful possibilities there for making the world a great deal more humane, and uh, I encourage us to explore it. Cheers.